tell me about your journey with the dry eye issues. Um, okay, so I've had issues with dry eye for the last four or five years now. Um, I have tried pretty much everything. Um, Procara, Restasis, Cydra, Lid Scrubs, um, DHA Drops. Uh, oh gosh, we've tried other things. Um, I've only been gland probing, Lipoflow, IPL. Um, and a lot of these things help and a lot of them don't. One of the most helpful things that I found have ha has been the PRP drops and the umbilical cord serum drops. I specifically like the PRP drops better than the autologous serum. I've also tried that. I found the PRP works better. Uh, so I fly all the way from Connecticut to DC to see Dr. Kremers because I can get PRP drops here. What do you do for work? Uh, I'm a software engineer. What was your first key symptom? Um, I couldn't wear my contacts. That was probably when I first started to notice. And how many years ago was that? Oof, 2016. And then what happened after that? Um, I saw a bunch of doctors, mm -hmm. like many doctors. Um, it took a while to actually get diagnosed with dry eye. Uh, I think maybe around doctor 10 or 11. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I found a couple of doctors that I really liked some that I didn't like and the ones that I like I continue to see and the ones that I don't like I kind of just chalk it up as the cost of doing business and yeah I've, I've found that visionary eye doctors has been really helpful um they are trying a lot of new things that you can't find at other offices um so it's definitely at the forefront of dry eye treatment so if you have an issue, I would suggest you at least so try. A lot of this is very overwhelming. And the issue is that the eye tear film complex is complex. And so there's a lot of information. We try not to overwhelm patients, but we want to tell you the information. So sometimes when I see a patient the first time, I'll make a note of what we saw, but then we'll take time to explain every issue. So one of the most common things we see, and part of this is genetic, is a big long word called conjunctival cholesis. And what that is, is basically the eyeball is this white part is called the sclera it's covered by the conjunctiva it's why we sometimes get conjunctivitis and the conjunctiva is kind of like saran wrap it should be really kind of nice and tight along the eyeball and as we get older either from genetics or frequent rubbing from allergies aging smoking all these factors LASIK, we could, I don't think I've seen a paper to say LASIK causes conjunctival, conjunctival cholesis. Potentially it could, but I've not seen that connection. Most often it's from rubbing and aging. So the saran wrap or the conjunctiva becomes more lax and has folds. And we can see it under the microscope. And the reason why it's an issue is because in some people it makes the tear film evaporate irregularly. It makes the tear film unstable. And so it doesn't lubricate, the tear film doesn't lubricate the conjunctiva and the sclera and the cornea the way it should. And so it's at the end of the stepladder here because we treat it, let me give that to you, we treat it at the end. So basically we try to do everything first. If nothing is getting better, then we'll address the conjunctiva cholesis. And what we, there's two options for that. One is to use a laser to try to tack down the conjunctiva to the sclera. So put like little tiny laser holes in the saran wrap so it attaches to the sclera. If it doesn't work, then we actually have to do a surgical procedure to cut the conjunctiva and make it flat. Neither one of those are attractive, obviously. So we obviously try to do everything before we have to address that. Okay. okay, it's not a cancer. It is treatable. It is a very frequent diagnosis. Common. Very, very common. And it's something that can be very irritating to some people because they will feel like there's something constantly in their eye and it just drives them crazy. But if none of this other options work, then we go to those two options. Okay, and... Uh... Do we know if mine is like mild or severe? We'll take a or? look. We'll take a look at that in a few minutes. But there are stages. So some people it's very minimal. Some people it's very significant. Some people can even see it in the mirror as that significant. So when you say aging, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what ages are we talking about? It partly can be genetic. So in other words, if there's a family history, it can happen in your 20s, 30s. I've seen it in young people, like 20s and 30s. Most often it's older, you okay. know, so it depends. So if you're just like going like this during the day mm -hmm. and stuff for like 20 years. Exactly. It can affect it. That's right. All That's right. right. Thank you.